Good afternoon, everybody. This is Chris Scully and Bob Spitz coming to you live from Drive. And we have a really interesting, exciting, and maybe a little bit confusing topic to talk about. Yeah, today. what are we going to cover today, Chris? We're going to talk about chat GT GPT. So first thing is, let's clear up what that is. Um, you might not know about it. You might have heard about it. It might be confusing. So what chat GPT is, is an artificial intelligence chat bot that is um, been trained on language and basically writing and natural language. And GPT stands for, it's kind of a technical term, but generative pre-trained transformer, which is a type of language model. And what it does is it generates text and it does, and it's been pre-trained to do it well. Okay. That's the idea. Yeah. Now I think it's interesting where chat GPT gets all of its content from. Yeah. The internet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And we'll talk about why that may be a problem a little bit later. Yeah, exactly. So um, let's talk about what you what you can use it for, what it's good for. Um, we uh, we were talking right before we went on the air about a couple of examples. So um, let's say you have a policy that you haven't updated in a while. Um, one great use for chat GPT, and I've tested this several different times is you can actually copy and paste your policy into uh, the chat box and ask it to update it or simplify it or change the tone of it. You can do all or kinds edit of it. things. Yeah, and it, it does really well with that type of a task. It's actually Sim similar, it very, to very good. Do for, similar to what Carla would do to you if you <laughs> sent it to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great example, actually. Um, but don't send it to Carla. She'll kill me if I, I yeah. recommend everybody send their policies to Carla. Yeah, she might. Yeah. All right. So that's one really good use of, of chat GPT. Another is, uh, let's say you're, you're looking to write a social media post, or you want to, you want to write a social media post about something that you have going on at the shop, but you can't come up with the right wording or whatever. You got a little bit of writer's block going on. Chat GPT is great. You know, you could just say something something like, uh, write a Facebook post about blah. You tell it what blah is going to be and it'll give you something. Maybe it's not quite exactly what you would want it to say, but it gets you over that initial hurdle of looking at the blank screen, so to speak. Right. Now, there's a good chance if you've got teenage or college age kids, they already know about this. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Whether they've told you about it, I don't know. Yeah. And that's, you know, ChatGPT like really took um, education and uh, certain sectors by storm at the beginning of the year. And it's it's really uh, taken off in terms of popularity. And we're going to talk about, uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's do a little bit of a demonstration too, because the um, while ChatGPT has a lot of benefits and a lot of uses, and we're going to cover more uses for you um, as we go through, but... I want to show you a limitation because it doesn't always understand what you want at first try, doesn't always get it right. It can give you incorrect data. So I'm going to tell you straight up before I even share my screen and we go over this little demonstration is if you want, um, let's say, information from chat GPT about doing a particular repair or something like that, it will fail miserably. Yes. <laughs> Don't use it for that. It's not, that's not what it's designed for. So, um, but let's talk about an application that would be a useful application, but you have to, 
give it the right instructions and fine tune what it does. So I'm going to share my screen. And uh, if you're on a handheld device, you might want to, uh, I don't know, look closely because uh, we're going to show what ChatGPT looks like and some things that it does. All right. So what I did here with uh, ChatGPT right before we actually came on is I asked it to compose a cop copy for a postcard about a holiday special for an auto repair shop that includes an oil change, checking tires, and a multi-point inspection of the vehicle. And it gave me this response. Holiday special, need your vehicle in tip-top shape for the holiday season, look no further. We've got the perfect treat for your car this festive season. And this thing goes on and on. And it's, as you can see, as I'm scrolling on the screen, it's quite long. Now, it won't fit on a postcard. No, unless you <laughs> unless you put this in teeny tiny top type it won't fit on a postcard but it gives you some great bullet points it's got some really good points to it so what i then did was i said all right cut it down by a third of that length and specify what part should be on the front and what should be on the back and then this is the this is the result i got front of the postcard is here really good, super short, and combined, combined with a good image, that's a great front of the postcard. And then the back of the postcard section is here. And again, it's short enough and it hits the key points pretty well, in my opinion. So I could use that. I could take that I can copy it. I can send it off to my whoever's going to design my postcard and say, here's the copy. Give me a design. And we'd be we'd be in pretty good shape. Yeah. So now let's play around with this a little bit. And I'm going to ask it to turn. Uh, turn the first response into a Facebook post. Yep. Let's see what it says. Now, this will also hap happen sometimes with ChatGPT. It can get slow if it if it's got a lot of traffic. Um, and it, it has it, a lot of traffic. It does. It's really very very popular. And you know, uh, I I just asked it just as we're waiting, Chris. Another use for this, because it's something that people don't do all the time, but let's say you have to do a presentation to your BNI group or a Chamber of Commerce meeting. I just ask it, give me a, I, I need to do a talk on my business. It was started by my grandfather, my great grandfather in 1923. We're family oriented and we pride ourselves to be part of the community. I need a, I need a short talk. And it, just really nailed it. That's great. In about, in about 15 seconds. Yeah, that's awesome. And I've known people, they, they've they've struggled over putting together something like this over weeks. All right. So here's the Facebook post that it generated. And that's pretty good. I would use that on Facebook. Now let's do this. Um, Make sure I'm all the way at the bottom of the screen here. Okay. Turn that into a tweet. Look how quick it is doing this. Yeah. Hashtag it might be a... special hashtag car care, auto repair. And notice that it even included hashtags. Yeah. So it can be really useful for these kinds of things. Um, another use, and it, and you could do this with any kind of, of, uh, social media, you can have it generate text for your social media posts. And it, it's really, really good with that. Um, let's try another one. I'm actually going to start a new chat so I can preserve that, that marketing thing. 
And while I'm doing this, um, let's see, write uh, policy. Yeah, let's do a procedure for what should we do, Bob? Cleaning the bathroom. Oh, there we go. Bam. <laughs> now, I didn't specify that it was at a business, so it's giving the shower, the bathtub, you know, right. all that stuff. But look you how can fast take that it. and edit it down. Right. You can take that. You can take out the points that don't apply to your shop. And you've got now got a procedure for your playbook for cleaning the bathroom. Yeah. Carolyn said we should do one on just answering the phone. All right. Procedure for answering the phone in my automotive repair shop. <laughs> well, good luck on number one. <laughs> yeah, please don't take what chat is giving you and just pasting it into a Word document and using it without reading it. Yeah, you want to read it. You want to also customize it to your shop. Some of these things you may not want as part of that procedure. Others you might, but it's a very good. Um, starting point. Starting point, and it <clears throat> does it so fast, it will save you a boatload of time. Okay. Yeah. Now, Ron asked about, okay, change the request to cleaning the restroom at a business. Okay. Okay, so there you go. Now, actually, I want to point out something, and here's why you really want to inspect and edit the output from ChatGPT. Let's go down here to number seven. Actually, let's go above number seven. So it has you spraying countertops, wiping services, surfaces, cleaning the toilet, and cleaning sink and fixtures, etc. Now. If you're doing those things, what is the likelihood that some water or some of that cleaner will end up on the floor? Yeah, sure. Think? It's yeah. probably going to, right? Yeah. So putting sweep or vacuum the floor to remove dust, dirt, and debris as step seven is probably not the correct sequence. You'd want to do that before you, you, you introduced anything that might be wet. So this is one of the things that you have to have some common sense about. Right. Right. Because the sequence GPT, might not be right. Right. ChatGPT doesn't necessarily have common sense, and it certainly has never swept a wet floor. So <laughs> <laughs> to, to be, you know, simple about it. So you want to make sure that you really look at its output with a critical eye. But I tell you, when it comes to policies and procedures, it can save you a lot of time versus coming up with it on your own, typing it on your own, et cetera. Because now you can take its output and tweak it so that it is usable for your shop. All right. So yeah. I realized- You know, it's just, also good for just research. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I realized that we told you it existed. 
and we're showing it to you, but we haven't told you how you can get access to it. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would help. Yeah. So basically what you do is you go to uh, chat.openai.com and uh, you sign up for a free account. And it'll take you through some stuff to verify that you're human. And uh, it's going to ask you for your email address and your phone number and your firstborn. No, it doesn't ask you for your firstborn. <laughs> um, but uh, you get a free account and you get access to this exact screen that we're showing right here and, and now. So it's easy to get access to and you can use it for a bunch of things. Now you can do some research with it. Um, there's actually on the home page, it asks, explain to me whatever topic in simple terms, which actually brings up another big use. Um, when you get a, a technician, an inspection back from a technician, very often their notes are gonna be very technical. We are and technicians. That's right. And your service advisor is going to have to translate what that vehicle needs to terms that the customer is going to understand. And uh, if you've got a newer service advisor, that service advisor might not be that good at translating that information yet. ChatGPT is very good at it. Very good at it. So... Um, you can take whatever the technician wrote and you could say, um, explain this in terms that a housewife will understand and it will do it and it will do a good job at it. Yep. Um, I've seen some examples. Jim Saley was playing around with this and he shared the what he got out of it. And it was extremely useful uh, text that and fast and it was very fast. So what will that do? it will actually improve the productivity of your service advisor and uh, that's incredible all by itself. And there's, you could, uh, you could use it in different ways. You could also potentially, if you need to translate something into another language, you can translate it that way. Um, those are things that ChatGPT excels at. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give everybody a warning. You get into this. It is so fascinating. Set a timer. <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll you you think social media can suck up time? Start playing with this. Holy cow! Yeah, and and it's it's fun, but we're we're mostly here to talk about how it can help your production. So that's right. If you're using it for for the uses that we've talked about, it's great. Uh, another thing that you can do that I'm not sure we've talked about yet with chat GPT is let's say you, you wrote a procedure or policy and it's just dry and it's like formal or you don't like the way it sounds. You could actually get it to add humor, humor or, or you could say, uh, okay, lighten this up, make it sound more casual. And it's great at that. Yeah, you could also ask it to dumb it down. Yep. Or add education to it, depending right. on your audience. Exactly. So there's a lot of use, uses to it. And here's the most important point. If you use it wisely, it will improve your productivity. It will help you build your playbook. It will help your um, uh, Overall, you, it will help your team get on the same page because you'll be able to put out policies and procedures faster and they'll be good. Yeah, Again, it'll save you time. You can't take everything it spits out and just use it without checking it and uh, customizing it, but it will certainly make the whole process of 
getting those things created much faster for you. Yeah. But, you know, it reminds me, Chris, a little bit of the days when calculators first came into play. And we didn't totally, those handheld calculators, we didn't completely trust them. Now, of course, our generation knew how to do math in our heads. So we'd have an idea of what the answer should be. Well, chat mm -hmm. GPT is a little bit like that. You should have a good idea of what it is you're looking for. Then you can ask it and then see if it's coming up with what you want. Right. Yeah, and that's um, that's something that is a rule of thumb, I think, in using any tool like this is remember it's it's not designed to replace your brain or your common sense right. <laughs> or your experience. That's right. It's, you can't put your brain in neutral. It's designed to speed up the process and to help you get started. That's the way I would approach it. And yes. it, will, it will shorten the amount of time that you have to put into it. Um. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. I had fingers. I didn't have an abacus. <laughs> <laughs> and toes. <sighs> yeah, and we rode to school on the backs of dinosaurs, okay? If we want to get down to those age jokes. <laughs> All right. So that's um our quick introduction to chat gpt some other things you can do with it that are also really good is um i think i already mentioned it but i'm going to expand on it a little bit revising old policies or updating yes. old policies uh in fact you may have had policies that you wrote in 2000 or 2010 or whatever and you want to update it and change the language of it chat gpt is excellent for that it won't change your content because you can give them the original you can give it the original policy by cut and pasting it and then ask it to make the changes that you want um if you're not a good writer and let's face it when we do a a shop policy apprenticeship one of the things that we hear from a lot of shops is Oh, I, I like hate write. writing. Uh, I suck at writing. <laughs> you know, you get these 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 statements, and Chat B GPT can help you with that because right. all you have to do is give it the general idea of what you want. And we were we gave very unspecific requests in this demonstration on purpose. But if you wanted to write, say, for example, a policy about cell phone use in your shop and it should include that uh, they can use their cell phones to look up repair procedures. They can- uh, Yeah, as a tool. They can do, use it as a tool. They, they can do this and do that, but they can't be on social media. They can't be texting their friends or chatting with their girlfriends or whatever. And that's what you want your policy to be. If you put that all into chat GPT, it's going to give you a policy. And then you can take that and refine it to the final result that you want. And it helps you as a shop owner. If you don't like to write or if you don't feel you're a good writer, it helps you to get over that because you're not the one starting it off. Okay, another use would be if you wrote something, but you're not really sure that of the grammar or the spelling or whatever, you can simply copy it and paste, copy and paste it into chat GPT. Just and ask it to say, edit. Yeah, edit this, clean it up, make sure that it it's good. You know, make sure that the language and the grammar and all that are good. And it will it will do that and it will do it extremely well. Yeah. Um, there are probably a dozen other uses for it that we haven't had time to touch on but, but if we just highlight these points chris yeah that it is awesome to help you write policy yes it's awesome to help you write marketing copy mm -hmm. whether it's for a social media post a postcard a newsletter 
an email it'll, an email it'll help you write uh, a, a speech you get you have to give a talk it'll help you do that uh, it'll help you with procedure mm -hmm. it it just has you keep thinking about all the different ways it'll help you and you just experiment play with it yeah, and Kevin just brought up something in the chat that I want to address a little bit more in depth. Artificial intelligence isn't what you see in science fiction movies. Okay. <laughs> it's Dave, just not. All right. You don't want to turn this off, Dave. <laughs> now I am it, dating myself. It's not Hal. It's not <laughs> Skynet. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. And for ChatGPT in particular, it's designed as a language model, okay? It's designed for language and the use of language. It's a chat bot. It doesn't go through the entire, uh, you know, it's not gonna hack uh, the Pentagon and, and fire off nuclear weapons. It's not going to take <laughs> over our lives. You know, that's just fiction. OK, yep. but these and what chat, what artificial intelligence is at its core is a computer program that is. Goes along this structure, if this is true, do a if it's not true, do B. And there's a lot of those conditions. And by then training it, it will get better and better at performing whatever task it's designed to perform. Okay, that's the whole concept here. And don't worry about, it's not going to replace uh, people. And it's not going to be... <laughs> And it's not going to take over the world. And and look, but it could it, replace some of Google's uses. It does. It does. In, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, you know, just research, just asking questions. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and it knows a tremendous amount because it, it it searches the entire internet. And it's conversational, which is not what you get from a search engine now. Right. Okay, it's a chatbot. It's like chatting with a person in in a lot of ways. So don't be afraid of using it. Sure, approach it with a little bit of a caution and a little bit of common sense, but use it. It's a tool. And if you use it as a tool and if you think of it as a tool, not as anything more or less than that, then it will help you and you can be more successful by using a tool correctly. It'll definitely save you time. Absolutely. And it'll help you confront things that are hard to confront because it'll just do it for you. Exactly. And that main one is writing. Absolutely. And so that, uh, on that note, we are wrapping up our show for today and, um, we will be back next week and everybody have a great week and yeah, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. All righty.